not ashamed to be that way publicly, mm -hmm. who are using the work of certain individuals. And they like, they practically have a safe haven in these people without those people themselves condemning those outright, very outspoken saying, no, 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 no. And even if you're borrowing from ideas from people who had these racist or ugly ideas in the past, you know, letting yourself know, like, this guy was off on this. I think he's right on this. But this guy is just horrible in this area yeah. or whatever it is. Uh, you were trying to express that Graham is holding the ideas that – People are recognizing these sources that there are a lot of racist tendencies in these sources. And can you explain what those are and what you're trying to get across before yeah. Joe and him ganged up on you and pretty much just want to pin <laughs> you down? I mean, yeah, and this all goes back again to the history of these ideas, right? And so this idea, I mentioned sort of Francis Bacon, around the same time he's writing The New Atlantis, the Spanish crown is using Greek stories, both Atlantis and the myth of the Hesperides, as a reason for the Spanish crown to have a claim on the in, you know indigenous territories in the Americas. And so, you know, there's this entire wrap up from colonialism period, you know, 16th century, up through the 19th century, you could see, for example, the Trail of Tears, with Andrew Jackson. He specifically cites this idea that there's an earlier civilization that was responsible for the Native American mounds as a reason to kick them off their land and mm -hmm. to march them west. And so, you know, this kind of fake history of this kind of Atlantis advanced civilization that existed earlier has been used time and time again in the past to displace indigenous peoples in the Americas. And so there's this history there that's very much wrapped up in these kind of ideas. Reminds and me of Mormonism so, too, by the way. Yes, I, you can definitely see that uh, in, in several of the myths of Mormonism. And, you know, you can see this of fines, for example, of people planting in the 19th century, sort of 19th century uh, forgeries of Judeo-Christian Near Eastern texts to try to make it look like the lost tribes of Israel were there or something like that in the Americas and to sort of strip credit away from indigenous people for their heritage and, and their rights to the land as well. You have to realize this is all wrapped up in taking land. And so, you know, this is this is straight up colonization is what's going on. And so there's this dark history to it. And I mean, this carries forward. Um, you can see this carry forward even into sort of the Aryan supremacy myths of the Nazis, right? So, so Himmler, he sets up the Aachen Nerb Institute, which actually goes out and does archaeological excavations around the world, trying to demonstrate that the Aryans are the descendants of the Atlanteans and therefore mm. are a more advanced race. And so there's this whole subcurrent to this kind of idea. It doesn't mean that everybody that believes in a lost civilization is some sort of overt racist who mistreats people of color. I'm not trying to argue that in the least, but right. there is this undercurrent. And as you said, you can see it among some people more loud and overt online, people that say this is very clearly a white civilization, that say the, the ancestors of indigenous peoples were squatting in the ruins of some advanced civilization. I've seen that right. put that way. And so it's just like, there are these much more harmful actors, you know, and people today that are that are really overtly twisting these kind of words. And so I, I think I even said at some point, you know, Graham, do you want to denounce this kind of people? And so it's just like, yeah. if you, I, I, I'm not trying to accuse it of you, but you should distance yourself from this kind of stuff. I mean, we have to deal with this in archaeology all the time. Look, earlier archaeologists, archae real archaeology also was part and parcel of co colonialism. Right. You know, this is certainly, you know, archaeologists in the 19th century, they looted and stole from conquered people, you know? And so we are trying to deal with the ramifications of that today. And so for I'm very strongly for repatriation or and giving ownership of material culture to, you know, the, the original uh, countries where, where they're from. And I think that we should be working with people. I mean, I do this all the time. When I go to Greece, I follow the Greek law that the Ministry of Culture sets up. I've, I've had to go to Greece to collect material in March, and it turns out something was signed wrong on one of my forms, so I couldn't go. And so I need to go back again. Sorry, I couldn't bring the material back with me to Cardiff right. to sample it for isotope analysis. And so, you know, I have to go back again. You know, this kind of bureaucratic red tape is part and parcel, but the Greeks should control their heritage, just like people in more impoverished areas should control their own heritage as well. And so, you know, archaeology, I'm not trying to excuse my, you know, my past colleagues and any cur uh, current colleagues that act dismissively towards, you know, indigenous people or, or stakeholders. Um, I think we need to be working with them.
What is your walk away based on that experience with Graham uh, on this issue of distancing himself from those online? It felt to me, and then I'd like to get your thoughts, is that Joe and him were trying to really nail you for this as if you were wrong and making accusations. And in no way in that process, all he said was, well, once you label someone that you've ruined their reputation and you don't even have to defeat their arguments, which by the way, what arguments, what evidence, right? That was clearly brought up. <laughs> and I clearly defeated those. Yeah. Clearly, clearly. But like, <laughs> I, you know, he, while he said this bad thing, you call me racist, you call me this and that, like he made it seem like that's what you called him. And you were trying to say, I'm not calling you that. I'm saying you're, you're creating an environment or a, yeah. a, like opening this environment where all these people who are using your work, who are in the same avenue as you, and you're not, you look like the rest of the ducks that are lined up. You're not this different thing, even if you yourself aren't. What is your takeaway on that? I, you've never heard Graham ever make the statement like outright that it sounds racist. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Have you? He's used. To, he's made some statements in the '90s that are that sound kind of racist. Um, I, I think some of that is older use of language, like. Right. Uh, you know, the language that today we wouldn't use. He's fairly careful. I mean, as people point out, he's he's married to a, a person of color. And so, you know, I think he does try to be careful not to be overtly offensive. I think, right. uh, I, and so I, on that, I commend him, but I wish he would, you know, denounce this kind of uh, misuse of his material. And I, 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 that worries me that he's, will, he's, he's not willing to go do that because he really should. That's just kind of disgusting not to denounce this kind of people that's call it a, a, a white civilization and say these nasty things about indigenous people that are not capable of, of their own heritage. And so, you know, my, I mean, you know, my takeaway on canceling is just ludicrous. I'm not trying to cancel Graham. He's right. uncancelable. He's too much of a celebrity. He has, you know, a major TV show. He's a bestseller on Amazon. And Amazon's the one that lumps his book in the subcategory of archaeology, you know, and it's frequently rated in the top few books there. And, you know, Netflix rates it as a docuseries. It, it, it's saying I'm trying to cancel him. I'm like a fucking nobody. I don't know how else to put that. <laughs> like I'm a scholar. What, what I now have 35,000 Twitter followers. And like, now I jump from 4,000 YouTube subscribers to 12,000. Come subscribe to me. Right. I'm going to do some more uh, material on this. Uh, but uh, you know, I want to do one, a, a series on Atlantis is one that I've been working on a scripted series that, that has some animation and really explains why we should not uh, be believing in these philosophical allegories as true and delves into that in depth. Um, but, you know, I, I yeah, it's just, but, but what I am is I'm a scholar and what we study is the history of these ideas and how they're deployed yeah. in today's world. That's what we do. You know, I study, I study this kind of thing. And so for me not to bring that up is kind of silly. You bring yeah. up the history of ideas when people talk about communism, they bring up Karl Marx. You know, this is just how things go. When you talk about stuff, you talk about the history of it. That's how scholarship works. So, you know, it's not trying to tar him as a racist. I give him every opportunity to distance himself from racism. And I, I hope he does more strongly. And other Thing. You mentioned Joe Rogan. Yeah. Is one of the things that surprised me was about near the end of that uh, part of the conversation where I brought up the image of Quetzalcoatl uh, from pre-contact having darker skin, not white skin, as described in these kind of post-colonial sources. And, you know, even Joe then realized what the point I was trying to make. He started Good. telling Graham, he said, you know, of course, colonialism and subjugation is going to have an impact on these people and the story they tell. And, you know, and Graham's like, well, I'm just interested in these sort of points. And Joe's like, of course, this is going to have an impact. And, and Graham just couldn't see that. I don't understand how he couldn't see that because, you know, legends and stories change over time. What's going on has an impact. If you go watch 300, the movie from the 1960s, it's totally, you know, an, uh, you can see how it's an allegory for the Cold War with one side being the, you know, the, the West and the other side being the, the, the East, the Communist <laughs> East. And right. then you look at 300 in the 2000s and it's very much a, a, an allegory for, you know, what's going on at that time, the Iraq War. And so you can see this very, very clearly in the choices, you know, the directors and casting decisions that they made for those two versions of that same story, if you see what I mean. Right. And right. so it's just that this is just how stories go. They're 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 told in a contemporary environment. 
you know? myth making. Yeah, myth making yeah. is always trying to anchor itself into a subtle contemporary historical situation often. And usually yeah. scholars can see between the lines, that kind of thing. Um, an interesting point that you brought up about Joe was uh, at first I was a little bit like annoyed. Is that that was the tug of war that I have because I'm like, man, we need more really good academics bringing the fire, bringing the real good arguments. And seeing Joe throughout that start to go to your side, to be honest with you, I think he's light bulbs started going off for him as you were making your point. And the big, big killer was what evidence do we have? And based on what we have already discovered, because he's acting like we haven't we haven't turned over every single pebble on planet Earth <laughs> to find the secret massive advanced technology. I'm just kidding because I don't want to strawman him, but he changed his view, it seems, during this episode to making them shamanic. What's yeah. that mean? A bunch of <laughs> exactly. mushroom eating, you know, trying. I mean, I think he argues that at times. You know, I, I, I really he try does. to I tried to go into this and do what's called steel manning him in a sense, take the best mm -hmm. version of his of his idea and show what the evidence actually is. And right. so, you know, and I didn't even want to bring up race to begin with because I thought I realized for the context, that's not the right venue to do that. And so, you know, that's not people don't in that context did not want to hear the history of the ideas. They wanted to hear what the actual archaeological evidence was. And so, you know, that was what I went there with. And yeah, and he, it, I, I was kind of surprised to hear him say there was nothing after what, how many books and, uh, you know, TV shows and stuff like that to say, oh, there's nothing everywhere I've brought you actually is not evidence for my civilization. And it's like, whoa, you know, one of the things I realized uh, a week later, sort of thinking back on the conversation, is he specifically avoided talking about any actual archaeological sites. You know, right. and he either wanted to do the victimization, I'm calling him names or something like that, or he wanted to go to these kind of geological natural features that look sort of human made, but don't really look that human made if you're an archaeologist and know what architecture actually looks like, you know? And right. so it's just sort of, he wanted to avoid going to any archaeological sites. And that's, that kind of made me feel good. It was like, all right. He realized that came with evidence and he didn't, he realized he didn't have the evidence to even argue those points. And you know, even he, when you guys did try to get him to talk about the one site, uh, that, Padang, yeah yeah way yeah. down there supposedly ground radar and joe had some really good points joe was like well so this is less evidence than this road that you can at least see that your claiming's underwater over here like below florida um i don't know the exact location that's why i'm just saying i know it's somewhere yeah. in the region off the in coast the there <laughs> yeah in the atlantic and I'm looking at it going, dang, this is a good point because all you have is like bounce off radars. There's not really any, like we're not looking at it and actually observing what is there. It's all yeah. based on bouncing off these, you know, the technology that's looking through the ground to try and discover what's down there. And when you all pinned him there to try and real, no, we need to deal with this for a moment. He's like, it's in the paper. He couldn't find it in the paper. He's like, <laughs> You just got to go read the paper by this guy over here who who is on my website. Tradition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you got you kept bringing evidence, which leads to me to my question. Was there any evidence you you know, you mowed this over for a year? I imagine you had sleepless nights thinking about what's coming. Was there any, not many, but yeah. You know what I mean, though? Like, you yeah, really yeah, yeah. thought about oh, yeah. this. I said, had a okay. lot of shower conversations. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, all right, this conversation's going to happen. Let's game plan it. Yeah. <laughs> was there any argument in your mind that you were like, I'm coming, this, I need to really nail this one, and you never got to mention it? Was there any arguments that you thought about that you brought in your computer and said, this needs to be shown to Joe, this needs to be explained? And yeah, there was one. So I just put out a video last week about kind of my reaction to the event. And in there, I had the one. So I sort of only came in with two sort of, let's say, gotcha points. Right. Um, one of them was was uh, his numerology stuff, the sacred numbers that he uses with the procession. And I got to get that in there where what he does is he talks about and what's well, sorry, let me backtrack a little to set this up. So we moved to Egypt and when because Joe wants to talk about Egypt. And so right. Graham thinks he wants to go to Edfu and, 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 and that's the one I didn't get to bring up. And so I say, cause he, he claims 
that he has these hieroglyphic texts from Edfu, they're called the Edfu texts, that tell the story of Atlantis in, you know, in Egypt. It's an Egyptian story, which is what's told in Plato's, you know, Critias that it, Solon got it from Egypt. And so he makes this big claim in Magicians of the Gods about this. And uh, so he starts bringing this up. He says, let's go to Edfu. And I, my best gotcha was these Edfu texts. I'll tell you what it is in a second, or if you want to see it on written out, it's on my latest YouTube video. But, uh, uh, but so I say, yes, let's go to Edfu. And he must have recognized how confident I was because he backed off and never went to Edfu. <laughs> they actually even cut me out saying, yeah, let's talk about that in the final release, uh, which which they did very minimal editing. I think it was probably because we were talking over each other. They yeah. didn't do any editing that I saw to try to make me look bad or anything like that. It was professionally edited. I just think I, we were talking at the same time. But in that talking at the same time, I said, yes, let's go to Edfu. And he gave me this little look. And then he didn't. He didn't go to Edfu at all. Instead, what he did is he went to his numerology spiel where he talks, which was my second gotcha. So it worked out well for me. And where he talks about the height of the Great Pyramid and you multiply it by, I forget what it is, 58,000 or something like that. Which why? Because that's 72 times 14,000 or some, some crap like that. And that equals the polar radius of the earth. And so when I was sort of preparing for this, I, I was recovering from surgery and I was sitting there kind of like zonked out on painkillers and I saw him use this math uh, on a podcast. And I was like, oh, he likes to talk about this. Let's figure out a response. And so, you know, I came up with the response I used where I showed how you could do this with pretty much any number. And so I showed how to do it with the number of columns in the Parthenon. There's 69 columns, magic number, boom, you do the right multiplication, you get the, you know, equatorial circumference of the earth. Or you could do it in reverse. You do 420 so that every time you're smoking a joint, you're connecting mathematically with the earth, you know? And so I got that one in there and I was like, you know, this is just what math is. You can figure out how numbers relate if you do it backwards. And Joe's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. You know, and it's like, no, Graham, this makes, this is not an argument if you see what I mean. So sorry, long story to get to what I left out. The Edfu text in his book, The Magicians of the Gods, he has these long quotes of these Edfu texts. And they're so like terribly researched is ridiculous. A, he's not quoting the actual Edfu text. He's quoting some book on Egyptian religion that's discussing the Edfu text. B, the Edfu text date to after Plato. So after Atlantis story. C, the quotes he grabs are from like hundreds of pages away. He grabs one sentence from page 253, then puts it next to a sentence from page 100, then next to a sentence from page 50, and says this is the coherent story of Atlantis being destroyed. And it's like, what are you what? fucking talking about, man? Wow. You can't do that. It's like taking a sentence, I don't know, from the book of Job and then another sentence from the book of Genesis and yeah. making a new biblical story out of it. And so it's just like, Man, it's a real gotcha. I actually did it to his books where I found different sentences on different pages. And I told the story that I wanted to tell of Flint being an archaeologist that excavated some site and proved there was no Ice Age civilization. Because you That's can do awesome. that using his words. Using right, his right. words, you can say whatever you want. You just put some ellipses in there and some footnotes and you can say whatever you want. You know? that, just one comment about the mathematics stuff. That appeased yeah. or appealed to me. When I was first listening to Randall Carlson, he gets into geometric shapes and the procession of the equinoxes. For those yeah. who don't know, the earth is on a tilt. And so it goes through these almost zodiac, zodiac type ages, right? Which are like 2,240 years, oh God, yeah. something like that for 24,000 year full rotation, 24 to 26,000 year full rotation of the, of the earth on its axis. And it goes through these ages and I thought I was decoding esoterically the Bible at this time in my life going, Oh my gosh. So you had the golden calf, which by the way, at that time, I didn't know to think of like bulls as ancient near Eastern, like animals symboling sex and fertility and the God I'm thinking bull as in Taurus, the Zodiac sign. And I'm thinking yeah. completely esoteric and anachronistic and thinking that's the sign of, of Taurus and they're moving into the sign of Aries, which is why you end up having the lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world, the lamb. Then we're moving into the fish, which Jesus represents the fish going into Pisces <laughs> and eventually getting into Aquarius. Like I was thinking like that when I was listening to these guys. And then I'm listening to him going to the calculations and the perfect. Even Joe seems sold on this idea that like 
I've studied the pyramids thoroughly and I've listened to the different hypotheses on how they built it. By the way, we aren't sure exactly how the great pyramids of Giza were, you know, built. 